Autumn is a special time with its falling leaves and beautiful Indian summer days. Steam locomotive enthusiasts enjoy the autumn season because of the photographic opportunities that present themselves in the fall. In Steam in the Autumn, you'll see several steamers in operation and see why this is such a special time of the year to enjoy some steam. Although rail fans enjoy seeing steam locomotives in the autumn, photographers of course just can't go to their favorite railroad crossing to shoot some steam. What is becoming increasingly popular is to charter a steam train and do photo runbys, where the train unloads photographers, backs up, then roars past allowing the participants the chance to take that perfect photo or video and get a little idea of what steam in regular service must have been like. So pull up a chair and come along with us as we enjoy some steam in the autumn season. Our first stop is in eastern Ohio and the small community of Sugar Creek and the Ohio Central Railroad. This rural area is the home of many Amish and provides the perfect backdrop for some steam photography. The Ohio Central is a regional railroad that makes its living hauling freight with diesels. They do, however, have several steam locomotives that they run on occasion just for fun, and today we're treated to the largest one, a 484 Northern, number 6325. She was built in 1942 by the American Locomotive Company in Schenectady, New York, for the Grand Trunk Western Railroad, which ran from Chicago to Detroit. She was at home in both passenger and freight service, and will recreate some of that today. Although we can't make things look exactly like they did on the Grand Trunk, today's train does give one the flavor of what it must have been like to see heavy trains pulled by big steam.
After taking water, our train goes a few miles north of Sugar Creek to a farming area where we do several run-bys that take advantage of this peaceful setting, working our way south as we go along.
During the lunch break, the crew put on a little play at the Sugar Creek Depot with our pretend station agent having a plain old bad day. Our silliness is done, and we've moved south of town where we do several runbys making great use of autumn leaves and golden October sun.
The Ohio Central puts on a great show, and we'll be back in a few minutes to see more of this incredible modern railroad that keeps some steam around just for fun. Moving along, we're in New Hope, Pennsylvania and the New Hope and Ivyland Railroad. This scenic 16 mile long line was once a Reading Railroad branch, but has been hauling tourists since the mid 1960s. Today is October 21st, 2004, and engine number 40 is being prepared for a day of photo runbys. Photo runbys are great for providing memorable images, but to really get a feel for steam railroading, one must spend some time in the cab just to see what it is like. Enjoy the ride as number 40 leaves New Hope and heads to the first photo run by location.
We've reached our first photo run location, so we'll leave the cab behind and move trackside to enjoy the show there. Number 40 is a 280 type locomotive and was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1925 for the Lancaster and Chester Railroad of Lancaster, South Carolina, where she hauled freight, primarily textiles. In 1947, number 40 was sold to the 3.7 mile long Cliffside Railroad at Cliffside, North Carolina, where she again primarily hauled textiles. For our photo charter, she's been restored to her cliffside appearance for a day, allowing the photographers to record some rare scenes of the way the locomotive once was.
One of the treats that was arranged for today was for Craig Redding of Lambertville, New Jersey, to pose his award-winning 1930 cord for several run-bys, which made a classy photo prop for everyone to enjoy. <laughs> After several runbys with the car, our photo special moved closer to New Hope to get some neat scenes with the train climbing the grade from New Hope through the lovely fall foliage.
you're ever in eastern Pennsylvania, make plans to ride behind number 40 on the New Hope in Ivyland. You won't be disappointed. Moving on, we're in the Amish country of East Central Pennsylvania at the famous Strasburg Railroad. While only about four and a half miles long, this outstanding railroad carries several hundreds of thousands of guests each year between Strasburg and nearby Lehman Place. It's the oldest railroad in the United States running under its original charter, dating from 1832. With several operational steam locomotives, this is a first-class operation. With farmland adjacent to the tracks, and nearby landowners allowing strangers access for photography, the Strasburg was a great host to a happy band of photographers. It's October 2003, and former Canadian National 460 number 89 has been restored to its old appearance, the first time that it's looked this way since it was in Canada during the 1950s. Built in 1910 by the Canadian Locomotive Company, she served in many parts of Canada. Not only has the Strasbourg done a first-rate job of restoring 89 to its Canadian livery, they've also got an incredible collection of lovingly maintained wooden freight cars that really do cast the illusion that this train is running in the 1920s. An added bonus was provided by local farmer Levi Fisher, who offered his horses, wagon, and dog Snowflake as photo props to further cast the illusion that this railroad is somehow a time machine.
With the lovely fall weather and sharp looking train, most of the photographers left wanting to return and of course they did. It's a year later and we're back in Strasbourg where we see 480 locomotive number 475 on the turntable of the Pennsylvania State Railroad Museum which is located across the street from the Strasbourg Railroad. Built in 1906 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works near Philadelphia, 475 served the Norfolk and Western Railway until it was retired in the late 1950s. It was restored to service by the Strasbourg in 1993 and had run in Strasbourg paint ever since. In 2004, it was restored to its 1920-era Norfolk and Western look for use on these photo charters. We're actually going to see scenes from two different charters. The weather did not cooperate this time, so we've combined the best shots from two October 2004 photo trains. Number 89 was also in service, and both locomotives put on a great show with plenty of great steam action. The pre-dawn hours can be a magical time for photography and the Strasbourg crews don't disappoint as they prepare the trains for the day's activities. One of the reasons for the photo charters is to present trains that depict a specific era in the past, and these next few scenes in black and white show just how amazing this little railroad is.
On both days at Strasbourg in 2004, the weather was a challenge. But on both days, the weather cleared near sunset and the resulting images were well worth the effort. Strasbourg Railroad is a class act 
and is a great place to visit for both photo charters and their regular runs. We've returned to Eastern Ohio and the Ohio Central for some more neat steam railroading in the autumn season. The date is October 6, 2002, and we're just outside of Coshocton where the Ohio Central has something special up their sleeve. This area was once the Pennsylvania Railroad's double-tracked Panhandle Main Line, and we'll make good use of some of their old double track. We've already seen 484 number 6325, but today the OC has another steam treat for us. 462 Pacific number 1293 is under steam, and we'll see several double steam runbys in the Coshocton area.
1293 was built in 1948 for the Canadian Pacific and saw service throughout Canada and is today one of several locomotives in the OC steam fleet. Moving west from Coshocton, we're on single track with both trains doing runbys. The OC makes money hauling freight and has a coal mine and power plant along the railroad.
Here at Trinway, photographers were given a rare treat as 6325 pulls a long string of empty coal cars on their way back to the mine. For our last run by of the day, the crew has some fun double heading both locomotives. If you ever have a chance to enjoy a photo charter on the Ohio Central, take it and enjoy some big steam action. Our next stop is one of the treasures of steam railroading, the East Broadtop in Rock Hill Furnace, Pennsylvania. The EBT was a coal railroad and operated until 1956 when it was closed down and was sold to a salvage company. It's a narrow gauge line, that is the tracks are three feet wide instead of standard gauge, which is four feet eight and a half inches between the rails. The scrappers never salvaged it, and through an interesting course of events, today the railroad offers tourist rides over about five miles of track, although the entire 33-mile railroad remains intact, including some dual-gauge track and even standard-gauge steam locomotive number three that has amazingly sat inside at the north end of the number 18, built in 1920, neither of which has run since 1956. With all of this atmosphere, the EBT is a natural place to try to recreate the trains of the past, and we'll see scenes from two photo sessions, one in the fall of 2003, and one a year later, both with locomotive 14 and a small string of East Broadtop freight cars.
reaches the end of active trackage, so our train is turned on the Y for some southbound runbys on the way back to Rock Hill Furnace. Really? 
Yeah. 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 The East Broadtop is one of the true gems of steam railroading and is something that should not be missed by any railroad enthusiast. The final stop is in Cumberland, Maryland and the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, which runs over nearly 16 miles of former Western Maryland and Cumberland and Pennsylvania trackage between Cumberland and Frostburg. Our freight train will be pulled by 280 number 734, which was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1916. During her original career, she hauled iron ore for the Lake Superior and Ishpeming and was numbered 34. She's been altered to more resemble Western Maryland steam locomotives from the same era. During the steam era, the Western Maryland was double tracked. So our trains today are more to generate the feel of mainline steam railroading than to exactly recreate the past like we saw on the East Broadtop. Seven thirty four is large for a two eight zero and puts on a good show over this mountainous former mainline trackage.
One of the premier photo locations on this line over the years has been Helmstetter's Curve. This large horseshoe curve that wraps around the Helmstetter family farm has been a favorite photo location for rail fans ever since the days of steam on the Western Maryland, and several photo runs are usually done here.
Another famous place along the line is the 914 foot long brush tunnel built in 1911.
The grade in this area runs about 1.7% and makes for a spectacular show as our train climbs uphill. Another favorite place for photo runs is the area around Sunnyside where there is lots of space for photographers to spread out. Autumn doesn't have to be sunny and golden to be interesting. Sometimes fog and gloom make for more compelling images.
number nine switch, our train leaves the old Western Maryland and joins the former Cumberland and Pennsylvania. This train will climb a 2.5% grade the next mile and a half to Prosper. Past number nine switch, the old Western Maryland is abandoned. Here we are on the old WM main line as the 734 passes overhead on the CNP. Rossburg, our photo special reaches the end of the line and we'll bid the 734 farewell. If you're ever in this area, this is a steam railroad that you certainly won't want to miss.
If you're interested in photo charters or the railroad,